Hello indie game fans, the oceans are a vast and majestic feature of our world, both gorgeous and beautiful, but frighteningly scary at the same time, so in line with the Team C's fundraising challenge, more on that later, here's a look at the best underwater or open seas indie games worth a play. Let's begin with Lumion, a precision platformer where you play as a deep sea fairy, having to traverse the underwater world in order to escape from the darkness and to follow the light. While underwater levels in games are usually quite a nightmare since the controls get all weird, this game does not have that same problem, where our protagonist handles and controls well as a precision platformer should. From the multitude of spikes and the look, it does remind me of some sort of combination between Celeste and Ori and the Blind Forest, being a gorgeous game for fans of the genre. Another recent entry from 2020 is Beyond Blue, one that is inspired by the documentary Blue Planet 2, and the developers did also manage to get some content from there to be integrated into the game. You play as a deep sea explorer and scientist, using new technology to try and find out even more about the ocean, which conveniently translates into the game mechanics. It is quite a gorgeous game by 2020 standards, not as stylized as its more popular cousin down the list, but nonetheless is quite a beautiful game especially with the animation of the creatures. From the overall vibe and theme, you will not be surprised to learn that this comes to us from the developer of Never Alone, a puzzle platformer based on the Alaskan native people, where the developer did consult with 40 of the elders in that game and had narration in the native language as well, and a similar amount of care has been given to this game which makes it worth a play. One of the insanely popular survival crafting games is Raft, one where you're building out your raft by scavenging the resources that float by while fending off sharks. At least, that was the premise when it first launched, but in the 3 years plus of early access so far, has evolved into so much more. Apparently, there's some sort of story mode with two chapters released so far, where the developers have added more on-land exploration, including a city with robots, even having quite an extensive building and renovation system that essentially allows you to build a house on your raft. The multiplayer support certainly helps, and most impressively, comes to us from a team of 8 people as of last year and is already one of the most successful survival games even while in early access. You may have seen a number of hashtag Team C's videos popping off on YouTube over the past 24 hours, but this is the next initiative headed up by some of the biggest creators on the platform like MrBeast and Mark Rover, following up from Team Trees last year where the goal was to plant 2 million trees. This time, the goal is to clean up the oceans, rivers and seas where every dollar that you donate equates to one extra pound of rubbish, so bottles, containers and other junk. YouTube's native fundraising doesn't exactly work since I am based in Singapore, but it's for a good cause, so do head on over to teamseas.org, link in the description to chip in. There is a certain sense of mystery and danger with the oceans, especially at their deepest points, filled with all sorts of alien looking and unfathomable creatures, and while Baru Trauma has a fictional setting within the icy depths of an ocean on the moon of Jupiter, the unnatural alien creatures here certainly have some parallels to our own planet. This is a co-op submarine simulator where you and a crew have to work together to explore the ocean and to survive, fighting off giant sea monsters and even creatures that may board the ship. There's also the little problem of a traitor or two in the mix who can sabotage the entire operation, so it's a very tense experience that is best with some friends. Thank you. 
the developers have also been very actively releasing updates throughout early access and as of recording is 70% off on Steam, so do pick this up if you have not. Speaking of trash in the ocean, of course I have to give a very special mention to Flotsam, the self-described floating garbage town survival game. This has you managing a colony of villagers who live on board a massive floating town where, like in raft covered above, you have to scavenge for resources from the environment in order to build out your city. While we are not quite there here on Earth, it's nice to see the ideas and themes of recycling and repurposing junk, not to mention that I love the cell shaded art style and the city building systems. The team has been fairly active over the two years of early access so far, putting out regular updates and patches, making this of interest to fans of the genre. As if from a dream I awoke to the reality of my existence, to the fact that I was alone. I knew that this world was called Aquaria, but I could recall nothing else. Was I the only one of my kind left? Was I destined to live out the rest of my days in solitude? Let's go a little old school, shall we? Aquaria is an underwater metroidvania from 2007, so that's 14 years ago if anyone is counting, where you play as a sea creature with the power of song, having a gift known as the verse, where every song that she learns allows her to reach new areas. In time, I would discover far more than I'd wish to learn. This controls like any underwater swimming game, so it's more like Echo the Dolphin rather than Hollow Knight, but there is the expected combat, boss fights and secrets. What you may not know is that this was one of the early projects that developer Derek Yu of Splunky fame worked on, where I always find it interesting to go back and play a developer's earlier creations, but historical significance aside, it's a good game worth a play. You will learn the truth. I know, I know. There's some controversy over the existence of facilities that keep animals in captivity, like zoos and aquariums, but if these creatures can be kept under good conditions and are otherwise protected from increasing human encroachment in nature, I do think that the knock on effects of awareness and conservation do outweigh the negative effects. Which is why Mega Aquarium gets on the list, a tycoon game where you're building exactly that. Think Zoo Tycoon but with fish and you get the idea, where a fascinating aspect is that this game takes into account tank size, number of inhabitants and the mix of species allowed, showing that care has gone into the design of this game which makes it worth picking up. This PDA has rebooted with one directive, to keep you alive. Any list worth their salt. Talking about underwater or nautical games will be incomplete without mentioning the mega smash hit Subnautica, 
one that is set on an alien planet after you crash land into the ocean, having to scavenge resources, craft items, build a base, and to explore the world as you try to find a way to get home. I love the exploration and discovering the various species of alien fish, which look very different as compared to what we have, where certain parts of the ocean light up in luminescent beauty when it gets dark and is a gorgeous sight. However, there is certainly a sense of trepidation and fear when exploring the ocean at night, where the game does have its share of predators and giant leviathans lurking in the deep, but overall is one of the best made underwater exploration titles ever. However, what you may not know is that this is not an indie game, hence the asterisk on the title, since developer Unknown Worlds Entertainment has a staff strength of more than 150, where the latest news yesterday as of recording is that the publisher of PUBG, Korean company Crafton, has acquired this developer, so it doesn't quite get a number on this list. Sunless Sea is an exploration title that amplifies the existential dread that the ocean can convey by adding in eldritch horror elements, being an open world entry that self describes as a gothic horror RPG. Captain a ship and hire crew members venturing forth into the dark abyss where it is filled with monsters, and if they don't get to you first, madness and cannibalism are constant threats as well. This is one of the best written titles in terms of how the atmosphere and world is built, but isn't as much of a traditional action game, so please don't expect that. Still, it is up there among the must-play indie games, so pick this up if you have not. The title that I alluded to earlier when talking about Beyond Blue is Abzu, an underwater adventure where you play as a diver, exploring the beauty of these underwater landscapes. This is hands down one of the most gorgeous games, and despite being a title from 2016, still holds up visually 5 years later. While not necessarily a gameplay focused title, just being in this underwater environment is a delight, with there being some danger lurking in the depths of the ocean in certain parts as well. It is perhaps the game most in line with the whole Team Seas thing, so go experience the majesty of the ocean in this. I have a little bit of an out of left field pick for the number one spot in Spirit Pharaoh, a beautiful and emotional game that will tug at your heartstrings, where you essentially take over from Charon as the boatman of the afterlife, having to cater to the needs of your spirit friends as you bring them on their final journey to the resting place. Spirits need to accept and resolve whatever unfinished business and regrets that they may have, so it is up to you to help them along, all culminating in some of the most emotional goodbye sequences in all of media. Central to all of this is your ship, your home away from home, which you can upgrade, build a variety of rooms like gardens and kitchens, travelling from one location to the next to advance the various story missions.
the sailing in this open world would certainly be a lot less pleasant should there be plenty of pollution, but for being one of the coziest and most touching experiences out there, it takes the number one spot. For more cozy games, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.